Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Today's Bible reading comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 52. Uh, I'll read it now. Jesus was arrested. Just as, just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you, had, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest, arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. If you'd like to pause the video here, then please do and um, read back over what is kind of being said, and I'll give you my thoughts on it in a bit. Okay, hopefully you've had some time just to read back over. Um, now it's the time where I kind of share my thoughts and. Uh, yeah, so first of all, you probably, uh, most of you may have heard this story before, it's quite well known, Judas um, betraying Jesus and handing him over to the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Um, the first question is though, why why does he do it? Um, and it's actually linking back to that idea of greed. Um, he was offered 30 pieces of silver, which back then was a lot of money. And he was greedy and he took it. Um, and obviously, if you watch my video from the other week or so, um, I was talking about the parable of the tenants and how that's all about us humans being greedy. Now, people sometimes think that money can um, is, can give you happiness. And it doesn't. You, although it can give you food and give you a house and all that kind of stuff, at the end of the day, it's not like a ten pound note. It's just a piece of paper. Now Judas here was taken over by greed, and he thought the money was so it was so much better than Jesus, and he was happy to easily uh, hand over Jesus to the um, guards and arrest him. Um, now, obviously, this is like quite an extreme example of what greed can get you to do. If we're greedy in life, then it can lead us to, obviously maybe not as extreme as this, but lead you to losing friends, losing people that you love because you put yourself first before everyone else. Um, so that's kind of the, that's kind of what's being portrayed here, that Judas is greedy. And this is sometimes what, for Judas, is what, Get, can greed can get you um so yeah the next thing is when um jesus said uh, the first thing am i leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me now this is kind of saying like am i some some kind of high criminal or something like that that because the way they've they've all come they've like a massive group of them with swords and clubs they're all coming at him and it's almost like am i some sort of high criminal that's like a robber or something like that. I'm just, I'm just the man, you know. I'm trying to preach people, and then he says, "Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled." Now this is kind of the main bit. This is the bit that kind of, I kind of want to focus a little bit more on. When he says, "But the scriptures must be fulfilled," he knows this is going to happen. He knows that he's going to be arrested and betrayed by his friends, and crucified on the cross and this is kind of one of the rare moments in the bible where we can see jesus is almost like us he has these feelings he is he is afraid um he he knows what's going to happen and he is really afraid he doesn't want this to happen but he knows the scriptures must be fulfilled and it is god's plan and it has to happen and sometimes in life we have that um if you're struggling, sometimes it can be as small as just like not wanting to do a test, even though you know you have to do it because you haven't revised or something like that, to as extreme as 
some like losing a loved one or a loved one being terminally ill or something like that you know you know it has to happen but at the same time you don't want it to happen and it's hard sometimes just to let go and just say okay i'm handing it over to you god and he's gonna li like lead you he's got a plan for you and if there's one thing you're going to take away from this i kind of wish it's this that no matter what you're going through if it's if it's something so hard and you think there's just no way out there is because god has a plan and it is such a good one now as christians we're sometimes told like oh you shouldn't be afraid you've got god with you you know um but we are you know and even here we can see jesus is he knows this has to happen and he is afraid and he's sad he doesn't want it to but this kind of reminds me of um this song that i know um it's by this christian band called L lz7 you probably haven't heard of them i've got a weird taste of music but they're kind of this um christian rapping band kind of thing and one of their songs is called brave and it kind of goes like obviously i'm not going to sing it for you but um it goes like only the brave will go where you go into the fire and never alone we know you'll always carry us home only the brave now this is obviously kind of really quite important like only the brave only the people who are strong enough to say yes i'm gonna follow you you know i, I trust that you have a plan god only only they will go where he goes into the fire into the place where everything goes wrong but they know that he has a plan and he will carry them home um kind of the last thing that i want to point out was right at the end it's a really kind of subtle thing um it's just my kind of my thoughts i may be wrong but um when it says a young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following jesus when they seized him he fled naked leaving his garment behind uh, this kind of reminds me to the resurrection when uh, the tomb was empty and people went to try and find Jesus but the tomb was empty and all that was left was just a linen cloth and that kind of reminds me here that they, they kind of seem to kind of link in some way that's just my idea but um I think throughout the bible you always have these kind of subtle kind of subtle hints and stuff of what's going to kind of things being connected and stuff um and sometimes you just have to look closely to find them but like I said that's just my idea um I think that's everything I want to say uh so i'm just gonna end in the prayer and yeah uh dear lord i thank you for everyone listening here today i thank you that we can have this time with you that we can give our thoughts um lord i pray that you help us to not be greedy and to not think of our, all our own self needs but to think about the people who need things lord i pray that you help those who are struggling and who need some help i pray that you help them to know that you have a plan and it's a good one and it, it will come through um i thank you lord i pray this through jesus name we pray amen thank you for watching um i think it's like the first time it's only taken me one attempt so this is quite it's quite an achievement um I think it's probably going to be one of the last Bible readings I'm doing because um, we're kind of coming to the end of the mark, but still. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you took something away from this, uh, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.